Um, for that, I will invite Krista on from the SAC to moderate the session. Krista? Thank you very much. Um, it takes some time before this starts to work, but I think it works now. Yeah. Um, thank you very much for all the very interesting uh, presentations. And uh, we will start with the discussion. Uh, uh, Thomas and uh, Anders and Magnus. Uh, Anders is the uh, Minister Council working at the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Uh, so we had two, two representatives from the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Roger did the presentation and Anders will participate in the panel discussion. And uh, Magnus also from the from Sila, as you listen to, at the, at, as the presentator. Uh, very welcome to the panel discussion. We will continue until uh, 3.30. And uh, I will ask some questions in the beginning. And then uh, I will also spare some minutes and times for, for you in the audience to ask questions or comment. And uh, then we will uh, uh, round up at 3.30. Four thirty. Three, four thirty. So, sorry, sorry. And uh, when I was when I was uh, going to start here, I was thinking about if I should say that. Well, my name is Christer Holm, Holm, and I'm from Channel Three. <laughs> because I was thinking about when you did your presentation, Roger. It was about about channels. We are one of the channels, and uh, maybe. I also think there are many people here who have been engaged in Afghanistan for a very long time and I don't know exactly how we look at the history. I mean, I think there is a lot of people here to think that Swedish Committee for Afghanistan also took some initiative to ask the Minister of Foreign Affairs and SIDA to, to get some support to work in Afghanistan. Um, but anyhow, now we should look uh, at, at the future. and. Uh, since 2014 is an important year for Afghanistan, the country has moved through a series of transitions, the international military withdrawal, political change at the highest level, and economic changes uh, are there as overall aid volume seems to decrease. You have to correct me if I'm wrong here, but that's the signals we get. At this time, it's important that the international community maintain its long-term commitments to Afghanistan so that the gains made over the last 13 years are not lost. So please don't forget Afghanistan and tell all other people outside here, don't forget Afghanistan. Uh, I was going to start with some questions on, uh, on uh, the peace process that could be there. You mentioned it a little bit, Thomas, uh, that Ash President Ashraf Ghani has mentioned that uh, his intentions are to move towards peace talks with the Taliban. Uh, in the coming development cooperation agreement, which I've heard now is going on, since we have, uh, we have a government now in Afghanistan and we have a government in Sweden and now there will be a development cooperation agreement in place between our two countries. Um, in this agreement, uh, will there be or could there be any, anything written, anything agreed on that could support a peace process? That's one question. And the other one is how can the UN United Nations Resolution 1325 on power to women in peace processes best be met in the coming agreement. Who wants to start? Can I start? Okay, please yeah. go ahead, Anders. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, sorry for not contributing to the gender balance. In <laughs> and, and we're all dressed more or less the same, I know this. <laughs> to be here and, and thanks for, for inviting. Um, yeah, you mentioned the, the development cooperation agreement and this was something that was 
initiated uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, it was between our former, uh, we must say now, uh, Minister for Foreign Affairs, Mr. Carl Bildt, and his colleague, the Vice Minister uh, Javid Ludin, the then Vice Foreign Minister in Afghanistan. This was a couple of years ago. Uh, we have been uh, negotiating this bilateral agreement, and as you, as you clearly mentioned, we have now have had a change of government in, in both Afghanistan and, and in Sweden, so we are uh, a little bit in, in waiting mode here to see what, what comes out of, of these two, two, two new governments. Um, I would say that this agreement is, um, is, is um, I cannot go too much into the details, but it's, uh, the agreement is, has a very general character, and it's mainly to, I would say, to codify, codify uh, mutual commitments, the Swedish commitment and the Afghan commitment. And, and hereby also strongly uh, underscore the, the ownership uh, from the Afghan side of their own development processes. Um, so we don't go too much into the details uh, of mm. this, um, but on the peace process in particular, I would say that this is something that we believe could be the, the real game changer in, in the history and in the current developments of of Afghanistan, because if you don't have a, if you don't, if you cannot find a ways and means to, to get um, sustainable peace and reconciliation process, it's going to be very, very difficult to achieve the other long-term goals. Mm. Uh, when it comes to, uh, Thomas has mentioned the, the economy, we have talked about uh, the financial crisis, financial gap, gap, and so forth. But in order to, in, in sort of um, reinstall investors and donors' confidence, uh, we must clearly be urging the, part, the different parties um, um, and the different actors, not only Afghanistan, but also in the, in the countries, in the neighboring countries, to, to truly uh, contribute to a peace and reconciliation process. Mm. But if you look at it if I may follow up, just a short question on how you do these kind of agreements. Is there any way, I mean, in those kind of agreements that you uh, can support or m mention or trying to do something when you talk uh, that could uh, make, create better conditions for, for peace talks or political processes that is really needed? Or well, I think you have to look at, well, well you can... Of course, you have an agreement, but I don't think that it is the agreement per se. Mm. But you can, we as a, a partner of Afghanistan, we can we can encourage, we can use various means to encourage the peace, peace process. But mm. at the end of the day, it's the ones that are the, the, the parties that are involved in the conflict that must must come to the negotiation table and, and mm. sit down and find. A durable and long term mm. solution on, on, on this conflict. Mm. Okay. So it's, um, we're there, we're there to support along with the, with the entire international community, I would say. Mm. But at the end of the day, it, it must be Afghan owned, Afghan led, and in, in accordance with the Afghan constitution. Mm. Thank you very much. Uh, Thomas, what do you think about this possibility and how, how could the international community uh, engage and act? when it comes to support the political um, uh, process and uh, peace would be, negotiation? <clears throat> it would be a long list. First, let me say uh, there isn't really a peace process in Afghanistan. There have been a couple of attempts which actually did not have uh, too much success, which doesn't mean that nothing has been done. Uh, there are a lot of uh, grassroots initiatives in Afghanistan and, and uh, some rather uh, systematic uh, province-wise, but also gender-wise, for instance. There are a lot of uh, women's initiatives uh, in the provinces, also supported by, I think, different uh, uh, donor countries, mm -hmm. um, trying to find out what's happening on the other side in, in the insurgency, what these people want there, and, uh, and looking for entry points, uh, getting into contact with them, and so on. And there are many. Uh, but this grassroots 
part is only, uh, I mean, that's the 50%. The other 50% needs to be political, also top down. You need to lead in process like that. And also, this whole peace process, I mean, in theory, uh, and it should have in practice, should have uh, three levels. One is kind of first the inner Afghan thing, which still does not uh, include the insurgents. So, I mean, the government and the former opposition, which now also is government, plus civil society and all its components. And whoever is there, they need to the consensus about what they really want. And do they want a peace process or do they want to beat the Taliban? And if they want a peace process and want to talk, what about? Uh, second thing is then, of course, including the insurgents there, the Taliban, a couple of other groups also, they also need to make up their mind what they want. They are not really good in, in presenting a detailed program, uh, uh, what they think the future of Afghanistan should look like. But it's uh, actually a little bit better than, than usually is assumed. Uh, when you read their statements, there are a couple of things they're saying which also can encourage us a little bit there's something possible. The thing is that also the stalling uh, uh, post-electoral process and so on and all the different crises we've been talking about also led a little bit to a lull in, 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 in those attempts. And, and when you don't do anything, I mean, it's the, this Chinese uh, proverb, you know, when you're not rowing against the current, then you're, you're, you're drifting back and that actually has happened. And it has been very late in the process anyway. Under the Bush government, here there was no way in talking uh, with the Taliban for, for whatever reason. And we have lost eight or nine years, which is, uh, we will not recover. So it has become much more complicated than it would have been uh, in the beginning. Then you have the regional component. You need to bring in all these neighboring countries and, uh, uh, and, and actors. And for that, you need someone who coordinates. That should be, in theory, the Afghan government, but they also need to have a policy about that, which for me is, apart from some statements, uh, really not clear. And I, as I did in the, in the past, I believe that the UN really should play a role and that our government should really convince the Afghan government, which under Kaze has been, become very anti-UN, mm. uh, particularly when it comes to political involvement, that this role is renewed. But also the UN needs to be more than just, I mean, the, the spokes organ, which it never was, but there was a tendency in Afghan sort of the very strong governments. So they need to be a voice for, for everyone. And then uh, there are, uh, then there are also established mechanisms from other peace processes where you can look for experience. And, and there were a couple of attempts in Afghanistan which did not uh, uh, succeed, but where you can learn a lot from. And, and this needs to be pulled together. And uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Are there anything you can say to us here now in Sweden? I mean, is there anything we can do when it comes to this uh, support to this uh, initiative or in, on the international arena? Is there anything we can, where we can move to make some difference? Yeah, I mean, Sweden always has been one of the countries which was most active uh, in these issues also, I mean, on, uh, on the civil society part, but not only. I mean, it's important that uh, uh, countries which, I mean, you also had had your military there, but I still believe that at least a part of the Afghans can differentiate between those who really did the big fighting and also uh, 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 crashed a lot of China uh, uh, down there, and, and between countries who have a little bit more uh, uh, <clears throat> diverse approach and so on. So um, working with civil society, which also has become very polarized and also a little bit uh, hooray patriotic in the moment. Oh, our army will do that. The Westerners were too stupid to solve that uh, problem, but we are able to do that. I think they're a little bit, although it's their own country, and uh, uh, they're a little bit on the wrong path there. And uh, yeah. so we really need to work and also sound out civil society and discuss with them. And also do not be too hesitant to say, OK, it's your country, do what you want. Um, that has been done for the last 35 years. Success. So let's also not uh, say that uh, we should not be too intrusive. So, uh, intru being intrusive is of course not good, but we also should have a little bit of self-conscience mm. uh, 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 and talk with them as, as real partners. Okay, thank you. And from the, the development cooperation side, SIDA, how do you look at this when you operationalize the strategy and the, uh, if you look at the conflict and the, the women's uh, a role here, the support to women's uh, 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 the rights work for women. We, we, we know, we know clearly. Everybody knows that that uh, children and, and, and women are suffering most from from armed conflicts. Mm. And uh, I mean, you, you asked also what what can can we do here? I mean, 
the, the three organizations that we have an established partnership with, uh, they have a crucial role to, to, to play here. Uh, not, not least also to, to inform us here in Sweden what's, what's going on. But I mean, we also signed a, a huge agreement with UN Women here a couple of months ago. And I mean, there are all elements of, of, of this in, in the, uh, the agreement. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have my general advice. Okay, thank you very much, all three of you. And just, I want to keep on to some other areas because now there will be a conference in London where there's a follow up on the Tokyo Mutual Accountability Framework, commitments that, that uh, uh, donors have made, uh, the commitments that the government of Afghanistan has made and also CSOs has been part of, of that, uh, that uh, process. And uh, Prime Minister David Cameron said at the joint press conference with the new Afghan president uh, Ashraf Ghani in the beginning of October, uh, and now I quote, in November President Ghani and I will co-host the London Conference on Afghanistan to secure continued support from the international community for Afghanistan's development. We will bring together all our partners to assist this national unity government as they embark on, a vital, ref on vital reforms to revitalize Afghanistan economy. And in, in, in uh, previous meetings and so on and Sweden has acted quite uh, has been engaged and also when this strategy was formed when we talk about when Sweden talks about itself uh, we have described ourselves as uh, uh, that we have a strategic and catalytic role within the donor group and also that the Swe Sweden has advocacy opportunities uh, and now I, was, I would like to know how, how you are planning to use these uh, ad, um, strengths at the London conference uh, to ensure that the, 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 the Tokyo framework will, will continue to work and the commitments are, are hold, etc. Uh, so that's my question. So I start? Yes, please. Well, uh, London is going to be a very important it's the first time that uh, the international community meets with, uh, with the new Afghan government, so that's, uh, that, that has a very strong symbolic value in itself. Um, from our point of view, we think it's very important to, um, you know, to dis rediscover each other, to renew uh, our uh, partnership that has been going on now for, for quite some years, already since the Bonn conference, one could say, back in 2001. Uh, and um, it's also very important to, to again, emphasize the role, uh, the Afghan ownership for, for its own development. Mm -hmm. uh, we, the international community, are there to support, to assist, and uh, this must be a, a mutual undertaking. We made our commitments in Tokyo, which has been mentioned here several times. And this is the, this is the time to sort of recommit ourselves to the, to the long-term support to the country. Uh, so it will be a very, very important, uh, very important conference. It, uh, to what we can discern, it, it will have a the key component will be the, the, the political dimension to it. Uh, so it will, it, will, it will be a political conference. But uh, as you all also have noted, there will be a series of side events. Uh, uh, one not going on in London, but actually in Oslo, I have learned on, on the situation for women and girls, which will take, take, take place on the 23rd of, of November. And then there will be conferences, uh, side conferences on, on the role of CSOs, governance, and private sector in, in London. So um, a set of very important issues, political and these four different subsets of issues that will will be thoroughly discussed during these two days. So it's, it's important to capitalize on this and, and to uh, also uh, encourage the government, uh, new government of Afghanistan and the new president to come there with a long-term strategic plan on how they foresee 
both uh, the sort of long-term development for <coughs> Afghanistan, but also what kind of reforms that mm. they see should be done. It's not, I said, peace and reconciliation. That could be the game changer for Afghanistan. But simultaneously, you need also to undertake a series of economic reforms, electoral reforms. Mm. It's, a huge, it's a huge success that we have uh, um, a new government and a new president installed. But next year we have a parliamentary election, and we hope that it will be a much more smooth process than mm. what we have seen during this this uh, yeah. rather prolonged electoral process. Yeah. But if you see now that there, I mean, what we have heard now, that there is a risk that the levels of, of uh, aid will be too low. I mean, it will be not reaching the commitment in the Tokyo Framework Agreement. And it will, could be also, it could also, also could affect like the this the Swedish development cooperation, uh, uh, the work and etc. if there will be not enough are you going to are you going to do I mean to raise that among the donors I mean there's one thing to talk with the gov government of Afghanistan but also how to to, to to encourage or mobilize other donor countries to really you know we have to we can we cannot forget Afghanistan at this moment are you do you do you see this that there is a risk of too too low uh, aid development uh, funds as a whole totally and are you going to do something about it? I, I can start. I, yeah. I think there is obviously a, a, a risk that there is a gap yeah. between expectations or needs. Uh, I mean, the, the new government, the Afghan the government has ambitions uh, and at the same time uh, is undergoing a severe economic crisis. Uh, the, there is a, a donor fatigue when it comes to Afghanistan. We, we know that. Um, so what, uh, when I was in Afghanistan three, four weeks ago, the, the discussions I had is that some, some countries, some bigger countries are willing or prepared to front load some of their, their funding mm -hmm. to, to, uh, uh, yeah, to mitigate the, the crisis that there is there right now. But that, does, that means the consequence is that funding next year is going, mm -hmm. going down. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's obviously a big risk. Uh, that, uh, that, and what, what, what Sweden can do, I think, is, is to, to go against the current, to, to show. Mm. Uh, and I, I pray <laughs> that, that that will still be the case when we have got our, our budget. Yeah, we do that too. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thomas, what do you think about uh, the, the, the volumes of aid and, and uh, what, what could the volumes of aid are, are very important, and I'm also concerned about uh, that it already has gone down. And between 2011 and 13, the figures I know 40% uh, by all donors. Uh, but it's not all about the amount of money. I mean, without enough money, you cannot uh, keep up the things which have been in the social sector and, and security uh, uh, sector and so on. Um, so if it falls further, that, that really will be uh, very difficult. Um, but it's even more about effective use of, uh, of the money which is allocated and which has been allocated. And that's something which we also, I mean, I'm from Germany, so we discuss these things uh, over there. And, and the German government has promised to at least keep the, not at least to keep the levels uh, mm. for the coming two years after that. It's a little bit more, more difficult to say. And we also have that fight. And it's much more difficult than. than in Germany to, to mobilize people uh, uh, for Afghanistan than here, apparently. Um, so uh, I think Sweden and a couple of other countries who are known as development-oriented and stronger on that, I mean, 0.7% uh, 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 aim and so on, those who, who usually uh, uh, fulfill, I'm not sure what the figures in the moment are, but uh, they can really set an example, and they actually should try to pull along uh, uh, other countries like like my own one, uh, where at least in the in the development scene, uh, they really want to uh, uh, tag along and and, and uh, have understood what the problems are. And, and, and uh, also, uh, uh, Chancellor Merkel just came out and said probably about security. We need to think also beyond 2016. I mean, we could say it, it's also problematic because it means that uh, there will be. Uh, uh, 
foreign military even after 2016, which will entice some on the other side to continue fighting even more. But uh, it's important to see that the problems will not be solved in 2016 and that we can uh, leave that behind. So I think if some countries take the lead and, and uh, what I heard uh, about front-loading of uh, uh, promised uh, uh, allocations of money, that would be very good because it would also uh, give a big assurance to uh, uh, to the Afghan side, to the Afghan population. I want to say one more thing. Uh, with that new president, I mean, we can be sick in one thing. I mean, ownership, Afghan ownership, will uh, 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 he will show because that's he, what he's known for. Mm. The thing is also that the partnership then also needs to be there. Um, and I'm not sh really sure, but I mean, we don't have the new government yet. We have the president and a couple of new positions and a few advisors, but we still have to wait for couple more weeks that he brings a team who is convinced not only by, 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 by uh, uh, statements uh, that reform is, is the right thing to do. And uh, mm. why I'm also optimistic is that Ashraf Ghani definitely understands demands for more transparency and accountability and uh, efforts against corruption. He means what he says. Mm. While the old government and Karzai more or less saw that as a conspiracy, the, uh, conspiracy of the West against themselves and then an undue interference, although everyone knows in Afghanistan that the people know what a big problem corruption is. And, and there are reports by very good Afghan NGOs like Integrity Watch and who are really going into detail also very courageously kind of uh, 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 naming these problems. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you. It seems like there is a good, I mean, there are some, some lights here in, in, the, in the darkness. I mean, in the, if you look at the future, how we can continue with the with the development cooperation and the new agreement that is, is going to be there soon between Sweden and Afghanistan. And also in, in, when we talk at the, at the London conference that there is now, there are concerns, serious players at place. Um, I would just like to ask you if, to, to make a short uh, statement or uh, comment at the end what you think in one minute, because then we have to also uh, open up for the for the audience uh, about how do you look at the way forward now for Afghanistan? Who wants to start? A short one. I can start. Yes. When I was in Afghanistan, people were very pessimistic how these two individuals should be able to work together because they have been arguing a lot and have different views and blaming each other and things like that. And my message was, give them at least a chance to start first, uh, mm. before you so to say. <laughs> that was my message. Oh, thank you, Magnus. Uh, Anders? Um, uh, I had the opportunity to visit Afghanistan on the 7th of April. That was two days after the, the first round of the presidential elections. And the optimism that I felt during that entire day, which I spent in, in, in Kabul and met with, uh, with most of the key interlocutors, uh, gave me a lot of, of hope and optimism and also the, the, the footage that we have seen from the election process uh, demonstrates that people clearly want a change and there is a very lot, a lot of hope for the future in Afghanistan so I think we should, we should bring out the positive news and the positive spirit that, that you have in, in this beautiful mm. country and, and uh, make sure that we, that we remain committed to, to, to its development. Hmm. Thank you. Uh, Thomas? Yeah, I want to link that, that uh, give them the chance to, to come together and show that they're able to, uh, to work together and to uh, improve things. I got messages from Afghanistan from both camps that say we need your support to support them that they're able uh, to do that because there are people on both sides who are extremist in a couple of uh, uh, relations, ethnic and so on, and, and uh, uh, very polarizing. They need support against their people in their own camps. Um, so that means uh, we really look at the political center mm -hmm. and uh, be very conscious also in, uh, with whom we work and probably also with whom we not work. Thank you very much. Um, now, you can uh, ask questions, please. Who wants to start? I think take three questions first and then we continue and until we have no more time left for being here in this room. Who wants to start? Everything is... Yes, please. Uh, <coughs> I wonder, uh, regarding corruption, 
which is eating up Afghanistan from the inside. How will you help the Afghans and, I think, in this case, a knowledge president regarding corruption to fight corruption? I mean, what pressure will it put? I mean, we're contributing money and they're pocketing it. Okay. Not so much the Swedish, but how can we put force behind the beautiful words and anti corruption? Thank you very much. I think I will, t because I have to, since it's streamed uh, through the internet, so I will just repeat your question. It's about the, the corruption, and uh, corruption is really an obstacle for development. It eats uh, Afghanistan from the inside. And how can, how can Sweden uh, and other countries help in fighting corruption? Are there any other questions now? Or shall we stop? Yes, please. Yes, I am referring to the strategy. And uh, on page one, I can read that uh, uh, the capacity of the of official institution and government should be strengthened. And then if you go further back, uh, I think it's on page four, it, it states the direct cooperation with the government should, if possible, be avoided. When we are talking about the ownership and so on, how, how will this fit into this, in together? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, shortly, uh, I just repeat that the strategy, there is mention that we should cooperate with the Afghan government and it's important with ownership and at the same in some other pages it says that we should take a distance from the Afghan government was that yeah. correct thank you and one more question in the first set yes please uh, in the uh, I want to ask Thomas Lutis um, have you uh, during the last year noticed any change in strategy or tactics among the Taliban uh, uh, movements? Okay, thank you. It was a question about any changes lately in the in the strategy of the Taliban movement. Okay, please. Uh, there was a question on corruption and in the strategy and also about the strategy of the Taliban, the I, Swedish strategy. I, I take the easy one on co corruption. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's of course very, very relevant. It's nothing, it's nothing to, to make a joke of, actually. But, I mean, first of all, what, what we, we got that. You, you asked, the, I mean, you started the question, how do you support the, the, the president combating corruption. I think that's a that's a right approach. I mean, uh, to really to listen to 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 how how he perceives the situation and see what we, we can do from from his point of view. Already, of course, uh, uh, a program in place. First of all, we we have our own uh, so to say uh, system of audits and, and, and things and monitoring. But as I said, I mean, monitoring follow-up is very difficult in, in, in Afghanistan and that includes also the, the, I mean, the control of, of, of corruption. But, but first of all, to work on, on this um, um, ordinary uh, methods for, for, for controlling and, and mitigating uh, uh, corruption. And, and we are doing that, and we are developing that, and, and we are doing that in, 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 in uh, uh, collaboration with, with our partners, with the UN agencies, with C CSUs, with, with the, the World Bank. And we also have some, some partners that, uh, actually I must admit that I don't know, you, you mentioned to us one, one uh, uh, NGO here. Integrity one? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I must admit, I, we are supporting them, yeah. thank you. Okay, thank you. Now we move to the... To the strategy of the Taliban. Uh, very short, please, Thomas. Yes, um, yes and no. I have noticed some change, not complete new tactics, but they have become more resilient, which has to do with the announcement that most of the troops will leave. Um, they are testing national security forces much more. We have more attacks of larger groups of Taliban closer to district centers. It's still all very much in the periphery, but the Taliban were already, or, uh, always very strong in the periphery, while we have overlooked the periphery uh, uh, very often. 
So it's not so that they will uh, have a sweeping victory uh, uh, very soon, but nothing can be excluded uh, in Afghanistan, and it really needs to be seen whether they uh, continue in that and, and how effective they are. I mean, they're, they're probably trying to, at some place, create something like a landslide where people start defecting and so on, and, and uh, forces are splitting up. But there are also counter tendencies, as what I said, that civil society has adopted uh, 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 the, the security forces and so on, and also strengthening their morale. So we, as a, always in Afghanistan, it's very ambivalent and different trends at the same time. Thank you, thank you. And we have the last question about what's in the Swedish strategy. And now you see there is a change. <laughs> I'm not surprised that uh, that Jörg I'm was the one that noticed uh, this uh, possible uh, discrepancy in the strategy, but it's actually not a discrepancy. And and my easy way out of this would be to refer to to see that <laughs> <laughs> what is in the in the strategy, because the strategy is what it is: is the, the decision of the former government, uh, and and uh, it's the the task of, of CIA to. To uh, to implement it, but I can just give you the the, the context. Uh, it is a uh, we see the the continued modality that we are currently or, or has up, up up until now worked in Afghanistan. We have uh, our we don't have a budget support to Afghanistan. Mm. Uh, we don't see that there are any opportunities for this in the, in the foreseeable future. Thank you. I think the discussion will continue on that <laughs> later on. But we have just, uh, there was a last question. Yes, yes please. Thank you. <laughs> I would just uh, like to ask him from uh, the Anders. You said that the, in the London conference it was going to be a very political, or it was going to be a political conference, and then you said it was going to be a side conference in Oslo about women and children. And I'm reacting very much to that because I think that uh, a political issue very, very much have to implement about the women's participation and how women can take part in the political issues that is in Afghanistan today. And I want to ask if you could more tell how this question about women's participation uh, will be taken in London conference. So it's not seen as something like me, no. So we discuss in London, and you discuss the political issues in, in London. No. In Oslo. The question was about how can, why is the uh, there's a conference in Oslo on <coughs> women's rights when it should be in in London, in, in together with the, all the all the other issues, please. No, no I, I, I perfectly agree with you. I mean, the, the situation of, of women and girls uh, is a highly political issue. Uh, and that is something that uh, will be at the forefront of our statements and discussions in London. Uh, when I said the that the London conference will be political, uh, I didn't give you the full picture. Um, uh, what we can expect is that the more technical dimensions referring to the Tokyo Mutual Accountability Framework, I didn't mention this, might be discussed at a later stage, more among, civil, uh, among uh, senior officials at that level. So it was not to contrast the, the sort of the main event where, where you would have uh, prime ministers, presidents and, and foreign ministers participating with the side events. It was to contrast the main event in London with the uh, activities uh, that will take place on a later stage where uh, the Tokyo commitments will be discussed in detail. Okay. So uh, women, uh, peace and security is, uh, is at the heart uh, of, of, uh, of the discussions in, in London and I can assure you that. Thank you very much. And uh, we are now uh, moving to the end of this meeting. And I would like to uh, first of all say that we as CSO, we will continue to raise these issues, to remind, and, and uh, as we are recognized as development actors on our own rights in different international treaties, we will also, we, we are always here to share with our experience and also how, and 
I think we are we are we can also really contribute a lot to the policy developments coming now in the agreement in the London conference and the follow up of the Tokyo framework agreement and I would like to thank all of you who came here to this meeting and all the the organizations that has made this meeting possible and of course the people uh, in the panel Thomas Anders Magnus and also Roger for the presentation here I think we can give them a big applause Thank you. Oh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>